Rescuing threatened landmarks starts with public awareness. To aim the spotlight on places in jeopardy, each year Indiana Landmarks announces a list of the state's 10 most endangered historic places. The designation helps rally support and attract partners who can help find solutions that lead to rescue and revitalization. For decades, every truck International Harvester put on the road was designed, developed, and tested at a mid-century building in Fort Wayne, designed by Albert Kahn and Associates. Today, the building is used as a museum showcasing the company's products and history, but it occupies land targeted for a new county jail. Participation in fraternal organizations is on a steep decline, leaving hundreds of historic buildings at risk. In Vernon, upper floors of the 1860 Masonic Building have been empty for years, and the International Order of Odd Fellows, a block away, is condemned. Long deferred maintenance is taking a serious toll at North Vernon's Improved Order of Redmond Building, and in Shelbyville, the Knights of Pythias Lodge on the city's public square is mostly vacant. In places like these, deserted and dilapidated buildings exert an outsized drag on the local economy and community morale. Vacancy and neglect are slowly destroying a significant landmark designed by one of the early 20th century's most prominent black architects. Samuel Plato lived and worked in Marion for 20 years, and one of his commissions, First Friends Church, has been empty for over a decade, languishing in the hands of an out-of-state owner. Once considered one of the Midwest's best preserved historic neighborhoods, Richmond's Star Historic District is better known today for its ongoing decline. Large homes have been divided into multi-unit rental housing, much of it controlled by absentee landlords. The district's National Register status offers no protection against neglectful property owners, and blight continues to erode the neighborhood's former grandeur. Since its construction in 1929, the 10-story Holman Building has dominated Evansville's downtown skyline. But the Art Deco skyscraper has been largely vacant for years, with water seeping in through the roof and windows. The popular landmark needs a preservation-minded developer with a vision for making its high-style architectural features shine once again. When it was built in 1898, South Bend's Birdsell Mansion was an icon of opulence and prestige. Today, the house is vacant and its ongoing neglect is cause for growing alarm. Repurposing the monumental house might be a challenge, but the Birdsell Mansion deserves a chance to recapture its elite status. It's easy to see the mark of Steinsville's limestone history in the buildings that line Main Street, all that remains of a once bustling downtown. With their handsome facades and large storefront windows, four vacant commercial buildings hold potential for creative reuse. But with each passing year, prospects for saving them fade. After nearly 20 years of vacancy, Knox County's historic poor farm is in desperate shape. County officials transferred ownership to a nonprofit that wants to use the property as a hospice facility. But without substantial resources to make urgently needed repairs, the 1882 building faces demolition by neglect. In 2017, 
Hendricks Regional Health purchased Plainfield's Thomas and Louisa Little House and surrounding acreage, proposing to demolish the high-style Queen Anne landmark and build a new medical facility on the site. Public outcry convinced Hendricks to abandon its initial plans and offer the property for sale, but without protections to ensure its preservation. A significant local landmark, Anderson's State Theater deserves a second act. The former movie palace has been vacant since 2008, left in limbo after a series of attempts to redevelop and reopen the property stalled. City officials hope the theater can become part of downtown redevelopment efforts. Saving threatened buildings takes teamwork, and you can be a part of that team. Find out more about these places and how you can help save them at indianalandmarks.org.